Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's session, I'll guide you through the process of using presets with your RAW files. This tutorial is inspired by many of our customers who have reached to us with the same question after purchasing our preset bundle. Now to start with, we should mention that Luminar Neo presets provide an excellent means to develop and elevate your RAW files. Moreover, with the recent updates to the software, there are now even more options available for using them. So now let me show you the basic workflow on how we get the most out of the presets and RAW files. And now, as always, if you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, click on the link there, go to our Dropbox account and download the sample files there so you can use them on your own computer. So here we are in Luminar Neo and the catalog module where we're looking at the sample files. We have a three images, as you can see, all of them from the same location, which by the way is the beautiful Royal Palace here in Brighton in the south of England. And that's what we're gonna be using today. So this gives us a little bit of an example on when you come back from the location, and of course you would have more images, but something like this, you would have a multiple images from the same location. Now, what I usually do is, I zoom in by using a spacebar and just go through the images and pick one that I'm going to be using as the base, the editing base. So this one is looking great. It looks very clean. It looks sharp. Now it's a little bit tilted, but it's not a big deal. We can fix that in post-processing. Then we can use the arrows on our keyboard. We can go forward. Now this one is less tilted, but we have a lady here. So we're not going to be using that one. And again, with our arrows, just to step back. And this one is lovely too. However, I think the highlights are a little bit too strong. So actually, the one we're gonna use is the one we started with, a little bit tilted, but I think this one is the best. Now, the next thing I usually do is to check the camera settings. I often edit the image later on, so I don't always remember what settings I use. So while I have the image selected, I go to the top right corner of the screen here in the catalog module where I can see the camera, the lens, and then the camera settings. Here, starting with the ISO, you can see that I shot it with ISO 100. So most likely there will be a very little noise. With the 12 millimeter on the lens, we know that we will have to apply some lens correction. And finally, with the f-stop and shutter speed, everything looks good here. The exposure looks good. And while we double check that we're working with the RAW file, we are now ready to start with the edit. And now moving on the workflow of using the presets with the RAW files, this is the point where you want to decide if you're going to use the presets or not. If you will, the next thing you need to do is to go into the presets module and start to play around with the presets there. And the reason is that anytime I apply a preset in the presets module, it removes all the edits that were applied to it earlier. So the basic workflow is you take your image, you select the one you want to edit and you start by applying the preset. And only after that, we will do the development. So let's follow it. So we have our image. We know the details about it and we are now in the presets module. One more time to access it. You just click on the presets on the top of the screen. And to edit it and get some inspiration, we will go into the purchase section of the preset toolbar. And here, let's check some of the presets that come with our essential preset bundle. So for example, let's try black and white. We can try the Inkwell Delight. So let's open it. And as you know, it takes a second to load. And once they are loaded, we can double check the preview. The preview is really simple. You just highlight over the specific preset and it will show you how it's going to look. So this one looks quite nice. It's a little bit dark, but it looks nice. Slate Noir, Ebony Haze, that looks great as well. Charcoal Whisper, Charcoal Whisper, I like a lot. I like what it does to the sky. It's really dramatic. Ink Shadows, also really nice. Or Midnight Matte. So this is the black and white preset. 
But now when we go back into the purchase, we can also check some of the landscape presets. And this time we can go, for example, into the sunset and golden hour. Again, give it a moment for it to load. And just like before, we now gonna hover over the presets and see the edit. This is a little bit too warm for me. This is a little nicer. Luminous horizon, also quite nice, a little bit too soft. Radiant dusk is okay, too warm. Dreamy sundown, warm sunset. This one is nice. I really like the warm sunset glow. So we will keep that in mind. Golden hour delight, even better. I like that a little bit more because it's more natural. Sunset serenade, also quite nice. Twilight magic, but really the last three presets were my favorite. So sunset serenade or golden hour or warm sunset glow. So let's go for the warm sunset glow. And once I'm happy with the preset, I can now click on it and it will actually apply it to the image. By doing that, you will now be able to see the full effect of the preset on the image. So you can see, now we can see all the sharpness, the white balance and everything else. After this, we now have the choice to use the little slider to adjust the intensity of the preset. I quite like it. However, just to double check it, we can now take the slider and really bring it down. So when I go, let's say 66, we get even more natural result, but actually I quite like a lot of it. So let's go somewhere around 90. But once we select the intensity, we are done here. But before we go, let's double check the before and after by clicking on the eye icon at the bottom of our screen. And we can also use the slider view where we can now use the slider and move between the before and after by using the slider here. When you want to switch it off, you just click on the same icon again. And now since we finish here, we can move into the edit module. And here in the edit module, the first thing you're going to notice is that our develop row tool and noiseless row tool are gone. And the reason is that we have already applied some other tools to the image, so it's not raw file anymore. However, don't worry, we will be able to access both of them right now. To do this, we just need to go to the top of our main toolbar and click on Edit. Here in the Edits tab, you can see all the tools we have applied to the image. So for example, the Mood tool, the Mat tool, Landscape tool, and Enhance AI. And under it, you will see the raw edits section. And here, just like I mentioned, we can now open and access the develop raw tool and noiseless raw tool. So let's start by opening the develop raw tool. And for example, when we open the light, you will see that some edits were already applied to the image. They are coming with the preset. However, you can still adjust these settings to get the most out of your image. So for example, at the beginning, when we were looking at the camera settings, I mentioned that this image was captured with the 12 millimeters lens. So what you want to do, you want to go into the optics and make sure that all the checks are checked here to really take care of the distortion of the lens. If it's still not helping, you can use any of the sliders here to adjust it. Following what else we learned, we learned that the image was captured with the 100 ISO. So now when I open the noise reduction, I know that the luminosity slider doesn't need to be any higher than 10, which will then bring me into the sharpness. And now I can zoom in to 100% and adjust it. Once I zoom in, I can check for the details and really the sharpen slider on 70 or 80 should be about right. Now we can close the sharpness and noise reduction. We can zoom out. And the final thing we want to do here is to use the transform tab to make sure that the image is straight. Here we have an option of different sliders or you can use the automatic button. Simply click on it and give it a second to straighten it. Now it did pretty good job. However, we still need to do a little bit of rotating. For this, we're gonna use the crop tool. So let's jump out of here. We can close the developer tool. We go into the tools open the crop tool and let's say that we're going to use a really nice panoramatic crop. So we open the gray drop down box under the ratio and choose the 16 on nine. Now I can hover over the image and just adjust the position of the crop. 
Now, when I use a reflection, I like to have the reflection in the middle of the image. And when I hover outside of the image, my mouse change into these two arrows. And now I can rotate the image around just to get exactly what I am looking for. So maybe somewhere around here is good. I would like to crop it a little bit further to center the palace in the middle. And really, once I am happy, I just hit enter on my keyboard or click apply on the tool itself. It takes a second, it crops the image for us, and we are almost done. So we have checked the Develop Pro tool. We know that the image doesn't have a noise, so we don't need to use the Noiseless Raw tool. However, if you want to use it, again, you can go into the edits and use it from here. And now the following steps would involve you adjusting the overall look. Now you can do that by going through the tools here in the edits tab, or you can simply go into the tools and continue using the tools available in the application. So for example, I would add a vignette to it. So I would open the vignette tool and simply use the amount slider to close the image a little bit and guide the eyes of the viewer in the center on the palace. Here in Luminar Neo, I really like to use the advanced setting and the option of inner light to add a little bit more highlight in the center of the image and make it even stronger. Once I'm done here, I can close the vignette tool and if I want, I can continue and use any other options available. However, for me, I think I'm done. So all that is left to do is to check the before and after again at the bottom of our screen. And when we started here and ended up here, I think the result is amazing. So this is how you use presets with your raw files. Of course, that the next step would be to export the image and share it, or you could also save this look as your own preset. Additionally, you could then synchronize this look with the rest of your raw files to speed up the editing and basically edit multiple images at the same time. Now, if you want to learn how to do that, we have a batch processing or batch editing tutorial available on our YouTube channel, and I will make sure that I will link it in a corner of the screen. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.